Recently, Facebook announced that it will be diving headfirst into the metaverse. So what really is the metaverse? What will it look like and how will it play a key role in our daily lives? Kevin Cornish, founder of Moth and Flame, a virtual reality company creating immersed VR experiences and has worked with companies like Netflix, MTV, Google, and even Taylor Swift joins me to chat everything meta. Join us as we get, well, you know, Rebelliously Curious. Kevin, thank you for joining me on Rebelliously Curious. So you are the founder of Moth and Flame uh, that deals with virtual reality, but can you tell us, I don't want to say it in my words, so I'd rather you explain to us what Moth and Flame is and what you guys do there. We're a virtual reality company and we have been... Uh, you know, we started the company in 2015 and have been just learning the technology uh, since then. We started out making content, a lot of stuff for, for entertainment companies, um, like things like Walking Dead, Virtual Reality, did FaceTime with SpongeBob at one point, um, did, a, did a, a natural language processing driven conversational experience with Netflix called Thir For 13 Reasons Why that was was a really cool kind of um, just use of, of in, immersive technology to, to do something that is at the center of everything that we do, which is this idea that we've spent our lives watching movies. What happens if you can step through the screen and be a part of that movie? And when you think about what is that what does that mean for kind of the possibilities of this next generation of technology? It really opens up a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things. The question is then is, you know, where, how, how do you explain the metaverse? Because you're part of this development that's growing. What is the metaverse to you? Yeah. So, and I think this kind of goes to that question about like, what's XR, what's VR, what's AR, all, all this, where to us, it's the, the, the metaverse is the virtual world. And if whatever glass, the VR headset, the phone, whatever, those are just different windows into the different worlds. And each one of those windows comes with different tools, right? Speakers, microphones, and some of them, you know, hand tracking with the VR headsets. So you can interact with that virtual world in different ways but it's always the same virtual world, whichever window you're looking through. Um, and so for us, it's a, lot of, a lot of it is developing stories that in that virtual world where the story is about you, where it's first person storytelling and it creates this um, emotional uh, environment where not only are you interacting with the world in like traditional kind of choose your own adventure type ways, but you are, because you're using your voice, your voice is a reflection of your emotions and your emotions are impacting the world of the movie or of the story that you're living through. And that idea of, of story living uh, as the step beyond storytelling is kind of, for us that like that core essence of, of the metaverse of being able to step through the screen and right. be inside of the movie. So what is it going to look like then? Because I think a lot of people have questions and, and obviously you don't have to answer this because I know it's still in development and we're, we're not there, but as a team where, or even just what you've heard, you know, what is that metaverse going to look like and who are the key players outside of Facebook that are going to be, you know, in this world that they're creating the secondary world, digital world? Yeah, I think, um, so I live in New York. And uh, so I look out my window and I see some buildings from the 1850s and buildings from the 1910s and buildings that were built two years ago. And they all look completely different. 
And I think the metaverse is kind of going to have that aspect where different, different places that you'll go will have different visual styles that'll be reflective of the design process that went into the place that, that, that you go. And the idea of a place, I think, is as much a matter of the emotional experience as it is the wall. There is no physical location. There's not going to be a map of the metaverse that has like limited um, real estate. Um, but there will be there will be places that are associated with different emotions, different feelings. That kind of the the drugstore of of the dopamines and the serotonins and the different things that people want happening inside their minds. Yeah. Um, and each one will, will have its own different look. Here's the question then. Is the metaverse going to take over the internet? Is that kind of the place where the internet will stop? You know, because it's like a global, you know, decentralized kind of conversation where a lot of people can we have tons of communication. You know, there's tons of information obviously there and people can access it all over the world if they have the ability to, you know, is the internet going to stop and then we're going to move into just this form of metaverse? Is is that the next evolution or do you think the internet, obviously the internet will still play a part in it, but is this the new version of that, of a social community? Community, um, that no longer needs the internet as like a one dimension. It's actually, or two dimension, it's actually going to be around us. Yeah. When I think about, uh, for me, like the big, the big shift has to do with what, what the hardware, the code was designed for. So a flat screen as a medium is great for communicating information through text. But it's but it's flat, and the 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 JavaScript all oriented codes that that so much stuff that happens in browsers is kind of running on. That's all designed to provide a flat experience, as opposed to a game engine. So looking at like Unreal or Unity, well, that's a the the definition of the code was designed to create a world, not a flat image. And when you start thinking about what information, like flat screens are great for word processors and spreadsheets. And then, but when you get into a world, text is a terrible way to communicate. But we as humans, we'd rather communicate with voice anyway. So when you think about Giant pieces, giant complicated sets of information are better for flat screens, but human experiences are better in 3D worlds. And so the emotional experiences, I think, that people are going to have in their digital lives are going to be more fulfilling in worlds that reflect how we as humans want to interact as opposed to the kind of objectified um, flat screen version of the internet that we've experienced for the last couple of decades. Yeah. So then who are they going to be the key players? Because obviously Facebook is one of them, but then are there going to be multiple people? And then do I have to choose which provider I'm going to go to. Like I go into the metaverse with Facebook and then there's uh, Google may have somebody else, something else. You know, I know that there are these competitors that are happening that are investing into the development of the metaverse. So am I going to have to choose or do, do we even know this at that point? And as a user, am I going to have to choose what world I play in? And then along with the other people and the communities that they might be in, do they have to be paralleled? Or do you think it's just going to come into one large place that everyone will be able to, to communicate in the same space? Yeah, that, that is it's a that hard is question. Like, it's, 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 it's your opinion. Question. It's your opinion. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really the ultimate question. And I think the really kind of unknown thing is like what you said about decentralization is what are those, what are those open source, unowned worlds that aren't the gardens and how much can, how much do those flourish? And I think that, that, that question of 
of who, who are the players. You know, there's the obvious players. You know, Byte Dance bought Pico. So that is a pretty clear indication that the TikTok universe is going to want to have an immersive version of its universe. And that's kind of scared. Of, um, <laughs> I'm scared for that. <laughs> into its own thing. Um, and then you think about Roblox as a version of the metaverse and Fortnite and Epic, certainly, um, certainly their own kind of versions that are going to, that are going to, going to intersect. And then you've got, um, people are going to want to have metaverse startups where they're building their own metaverses. Um, wow. In the metaverse? It's very meta. <laughs> and there will be the there'll be the friendsters of the metaverse where these things that pop up and have a moment in time that people will get really excited about and then forget about. And they'll kind of come and go and have their own graveyards. So then where do we leave with like cryptocurrencies and NFTs? they have to play a part, I would imagine, in the metaverse and, and will at some point. You know, there's so much buzz around NFTs right now and obviously different cryptocurrencies. But is that going to be a major player? And I can, to me, it kind of makes sense. Um, and if you know, where is the development of NFTs and, and crypto going in the metaverse, if, if you by chance know? Oh, I, I am, uh, I'm far from, far from an expert on, on uh, anything into that, going into that category. Um, Something that um, something on that on that topic is this kind of concept of of play to earn in in the world of like um, how does how do cryptocurrencies and and NFTs kind of tie together within the metaverse to create economies and how there 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 will be um, there will be players who are playing to build as part of work so they're making they're making an income because there's liquidity from like a buyer market and so the population will be there to work and a population will be there to play and that this that meta society is going to require both sides of that um, kind of supply and demand is like there will be people who make their living by playing in the metaverse because there needs to be activity to create scarcity to create like prestige around things that people with money want to buy. For sure. And don't we already kind of have that in second life though? Even though you can't, immer well, I'm imagining in VR now you can, I'm not hundred percent sure, but in second life they have, that is the metaverse, but not physically in it through VR at the moment. I know it's generally on your computer, um, but I imagine you probably can access it through VR. I would, I would probably assume it's evolved to that. So we already have second life doing that. Then does that mean that we're going to be taking, you know, second life as an example of how to build that economy because they have those fundamentals and people are making hundreds of thousands of dollars off building like clothes. And they're really just being the person that they want to be um, in that virtual life and not in the primary life. So will we look at best practices from, you know, gaming and from other players to maybe build into the economy? Yeah, I think that's really smart. Like what you're the way that you kind of you see it because it only it only makes sense that people who would want to kind of have their existence in a certain way um, would look to places like Second Life to guide what that existence would be like. Um, the other one that, that to kind of like throw into that is the GPT three and the um, that like what happens when your uh, existence 
in the metaverse that you can res you can respond in to people to like people that you interact with at the speed of AI and that that those conversation that really what you're doing to interact with other people is you're authoring a description of yourself and then through whatever layers uh, get built up onto on on top of GTP3 type things, um, they're having the conversations for you. Can you explain to what GPT three is, just for people that are watching and listening that that might not know? Yeah, it's an it's an open AI project. Um, that's it's like chatbot on steroids would maybe be the like. But what you what you can there's a tool set on top of it. So you can, so it's an, ex, it's an extremely, um, it's an ex, extremely, um, so take all the information on the internet and then run it through um, machine learning models to, kind of be able to parse it um, and do that really extensively with processing power that you couldn't actually have on, on your computer or quickly buy, or like any person couldn't buy that much processing power from AWS or anything. And so they did that and then they give the access to it without actually giving, um, without actually kind of giving the underlying kind of information. So you can access it and, and use that like group mind to build tools on top of it. So that's how you can kind of get a, a chatbot that kind of knows everything about the world and you can very easily kind of spin up your own character that is accessing that that data set for making decisions about what it says in conversation. Um, I had this a few years ago. I remember having this conversation with some, some folks at match.com. I guess they, they dropped the com, so, so it's just match at that point. Um, but they were like, what's the future of dating? Oh. Uh, they wanted to do, it's one of these things where they wanted to do like a brain drain type, like, Tell us, tell us, uh, give us ideas so that we can do cool stuff with your ideas. Uh, and the place where kind of the, the like project went was into this idea that in, in the future, you're, there will be bots that are reflections of you that will then go around and have conversations with other bots. And then based on the compatibility of the bot having another conversation with another bot, then that will determine a match. Wow. So your bot is your, your matchmaker? Yeah, exactly. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's another like key, key element of like life in the metaverse is that when you, when you can make copies of yourself and those copies can go around and have conversations and then based on kind of how those conversations are filtered, you engage in the ones that you want to engage in. That's insane. It's almost like in the quantum physics level where like you can, something can be everywhere, right? That concept here. And so the same thing in the metaverse, like we're in one primary reality. Well, technically it would be our secondary reality, not our primary, but then we have our versions of ourselves in multiple different places and different scenarios. Like, I think that that that's insane. And then how do you, we, how would you even weed through then? Like, would your bot come back to you and say, okay, this is the type of conversation we know from analyzing the rest of um, the Kevin's, you know, <laughs> then all of them said that this is now from our data saying this would be the best match for you or the best place for you to be in, in community. Yeah. I think it's just the same. Wow. It's just it's recommendation engines. Um, that so are, you're your own search engine. Yeah, <laughs> That's a, I like I like that description. 
because I think when when people are talking about the metaverse, uh, a lot of it is around kind of the the idea of identity through your digital avatar that you can you can um, you can look like whatever you want to look like. You can wear whatever you want to wear. That your visual representation can be whatever you want that visual representation to be. But I think there's an an equal, an equally or maybe more important part of identity, which is how we converse. Yeah. And that will be so. Not only will you be able to, um, not only will you be able to. Um, control how you look, but you can also pick what kind of personality you want to have. So for instance, if you were to, if you were to um, take all of the movies in the Warner Brothers library, so through that history of film, there are going to be a few archetypes. And you could decide, well, Today, you want to be the Bruce Wayne archetype, or today, you would rather be the Joker. And as people are interacting with you, the, the way that your words come out can be based on the description that you want your personality to have. That's so wild. I on it, like, so, <laughs> so then I'm going to get in the conversation of, you know, you can be in your first reality, be a certain way that you're genetically brought up. And then you have your secondary personality. Your secondary personality could be anything. So how is this space? And again, you might not know this or you do, or you've heard, how is it going to be governed? Like, how do you, how, do, how do you govern a space if it's decentralized? How do you govern that? And how do you create that community? Because we have a hard time even governing, let's, let's be honest here, our own world and our own primary reality in different countries around the world have hard times governing. So uh, how are we going to even do that in a virtual reality space? Are there even going to yeah. be rules? I think when you go to something that's like totally decentralized, it's community policing, where it's community members uh, gravitate to each other and create affinity groups based on shared values. And that, and there's like, you, you see it, you see it happen with, um, you know, in, in comments on conversations around comments and, and somebody will say something and you sh that's like clearly not sharing the values of the rest of the community and will get shunned for it. And I think that type of, of um, groups kind of governing themselves based on the collective values of the groups will continue to create something that's like even more fragmented than the social media communities of today. Right, because in Reddit, you have Reddit, Reddit and you have Reddit so there'll be like a medicate, like a <laughs> I think you, should, you should copyright that term. <laughs> I, I think I might. <laughs> Somebody's probably do after they watch. I'm gonna be doing this before I publish it now. Um, <laughs> medicate. All right, I'm gonna buy medicate.com and everything else. <laughs> so yeah, it makes sense that they would have yours your community would have to govern. And we'll see if that actually does well. If it does, then maybe we can apply something to our primary world. Um, and maybe the metaverse will teach us something new when it comes to, to governing people. Now, this is might be, a, this is more of a social economical question too, but the segregation, we already have enough segregation when it, and around the world when it comes to our own economies and capital and capitalization and just people making more money uh, than other people. So how are, what's going to happen in the metaverse then? Are we going to have more of a social divide? Or do you think that it's going to come together? Because I know that Facebook says that it's a social tool that connects people. And that's what the metaverse will be, which I think is almost ironic 
personally, uh, even though I'm a huge VR fan, but I find it ironic because it's connecting us in a virtual space, but not a physical space together. Uh, and it doesn't always disconnect. It disconnects us in many ways and it does bring us together. So where do you think that's going to land in the metaverse? And sorry, so many questions into one when it comes to connecting, but then also segregating us when it comes to money, um, friendships, you name it, there's, there's multiple things that could come into that. Yeah. I think one of the most intense things is the idea of, of work versus play that the motivation for the two classes of, right. are you there because you have to be there to work because your previous opportunities for employment no longer exists for whatever kind of globalization reason, but there is an opportunity to earn money in the metaverse. And that's why you are there eight, 10, 12 hours a day. And then the, the other side of that economy of there to play, there to spend. And how does that, those, the, the, the gap between those two experiences is going to be is going to be big, but at the same time, there is that democratization opportunity where, in a virtual world, you can create your own destiny. It's true, and you might have the separation of people not being able to afford to even get into the metaverse because there's tons of people that don't have access to the internet now that they can't even afford to get into that metaverse, so they don't they're reality in their workforce will always stay in the, in the, in the primary, it will mm -hmm. never move into the secondary. And I, you know, that's going to create some major divides within, you know, different economies and different people. And, and I really hope it doesn't, to be honest. Um, but I guess we'll see. I like this line of questions, you definitely are like on to what, onto the hard questions of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm curious personally. Yeah. Uh, my last question is to you. I kind of see that the world is going this way, that this creator space, you know, some people don't like it. I know a lot of artists think that it's the worst thing that's ever happened. Uh, Chaos is one of them is an amazing music artist that recently just said that. But I personally think that we're moving into a place where everyone's going to be creator. There's going to be no need for real actual other jobs like there will be in, in our primary, but I feel that everybody will be a creator at some point, maybe in the next like 20 to 30 years to some degree, and then forever going on. Do you, is, from what you're seeing in, you know, in this space, do you see that that's even possible that everybody would be a creator at some point in time? At a certain level, absolutely. I mean, I think about movies a lot and I think that, that movies are very much the, to this century, what the novel was to the, to the 20th century. And that there's, there's kind of a, a decadence to the, that idea of bringing a few hundred people together for months on end to make 90 minutes of an ex content. It's like insanity, yeah. um, but it's beautiful when it happens. And it's, and there's a depth of emotional experience that happens in a movie that, that doesn't happen in a kind of that thing where, you know, somebody's just the creator of their, their story and kind of putting stuff out there um, that, all of the collective power of all that creative energy coming together is a special thing. And that question of will that continue to exist in the future is uh, definitely a big question in my mind. I mind too. I'm curious to see where it's going to go. So that's our time. And Kevin, Maybe. I just wanted to say, yeah, thank you. And I wanted to say, I always say to everybody, thank you for being rebelliously curious. With <laughs> Oh,